Hi, Lucy. Hi, Trini. How are you? Very well. I mean, I we had lots of challenges, so I decided to pick vintage. Yes. And prepping it, Lucy, I was looking at why I kept changing and, and ultimately ending up with a different outfit. And I've, as a result, thought of five really interesting rules around vintage. Oh, wow, this is so good. And it's how to make vintage timeless, because I think the hardest thing with vintage is you find a vintage piece, and I've got six vintage pieces, okay? But if you yeah. pick one of them up randomly, like that, it's how do you make it feel incredibly modern? That's the trick, and I'm going to show yeah. you how to do that. Oh, wow. So when you say vintage, how old are we talking? I'm talking, this is about 20 years old from Bottega right. Veneta. The Prada is about 18. The little jacket is um, 1950s. The kimono is turn of the century. Um, ah. Then there's Prada from sort of 90s. And there's a Marc Jacobs. So it's just, yeah, I'd say the last 20 years, 30 years. And then I got a few bags. And I got one other very old thing I might do too, like sort of Edwardian. Oh, wow. So, Lucy, we need to start with you because I'm so excited to see you in <laughs> some leopard. There is not a Joseph leopard dress in the second-hand world anywhere. Oh. I have searched the internet. Did but you? amazingly, on Zara, currently, they have this dress. Oh, my God. It's not as long as yours, but it's silky. And the same fabric, Lucy, like exactly the same fabric, which is fantastic. It's very luxurious, the leopard Joseph one, and you've got that to a T in the Zara. Yeah, so it does have a collar. I've tucked the collar in, and it didn't have a button at the top, so I've pinned it. But um, I bought it a large, and I think it's too big. Um, I think it's a bit too big, um, yeah. but you know, there are some times when we feel bigger or smaller. So you decide, Lucy, if you're going to keep it. But... I think for some women, like a five foot three, because you're five foot ten, that yeah. that would be the length of my Joseph one. So that's kind of great for petite ladies of five foot one, five foot two, five foot three. Yeah, absolutely. What have you done makeup wise, Lucy? While I was waiting for you, I just kept playing, but I had, I've got Wisdom and Emperor on my eyes, and Freddie on my cheeks, and Tashi and Freddie on my lips. But I love the way you've made that wintry lip and chic, um, whereas I did that smokier eye and a pinkier lip. So it just shows with leopard, there's quite a big palette for makeup. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. All right, darling, should we get started? Yes. Okay, so I used to wear this dress, and this is Bottega Veneta, 20 years old at least. I think I bought it in 2000, so it is 20 years old. And it was the first dress I ever bought that had pockets. This is divine. This is the amazing thing about vintage is a dress is made so beautifully and it's got this hook and eye here which i can sort of nearly do up but for the purpose of how i'm going to transform it i can have the aeration at the back it's so classic it's... well you could have told me you bought that yesterday i would have believed you yeah and it's you know what stunning. lucy one thing i could do and i'm just going to show you this because i would have worn it with a, a sort of pointy new shoe when i had it originally so i could do this heel and what i liked about this heel is that it's um, a wedge. And I think because there's that ballooning, I love a wedge with a, with a tulip hemline or a ballooning hemline. I think it works really well because as soon as you have a spindly shoe, it doesn't work. But the alternative as well could be like a little shoe boot because then for that length point, it works. But I, you know I don't like showing the old knees. I'm just sat here thinking, your legs look bloody fantastic. It's the lighting, but I'm going to also show you another way I can wear it. So, darling, this is how I'd wear it. Okay, talk me through. This is a Balenciaga jacket. I can hardly bend my elbows, but I don't mind because it's a beautiful piece of construction. It has thick leather things. This is also about 16 years old, so I'm going to classify that as vintage. And what's important is that when you have a sort of balloon skirt or dress, you can't afford to have, I think, a jacket that comes over so it all looks a bit big. You need to show the nipped in waist. I've worn it with very thin trousers underneath from Daisy and Grace. And then I've got the little shoe boot because there's a little bit of white on the Balenciaga blazer. And then I threw on pearls to soften it. And I just probably do some Emily because I don't want to do a bright red lip. And I'd wear this during the day with trainers as well. But I just think you've got, you haven't lost 
what's wonderful about the piece, which to me is the shape of the bottom. Wow. And the pearls? And the pearls are Chanel. Of course. Vintage. Darling. Vintage, like 1970 Chanel. You look amazing. Next! This one, Lucy, it just, I mean, it's so too small for me. And I'm gutted because I love this print so much. It's from Prada, circa 2003. And I wore it as a dress with kind of brightly colored shoes. She did that whole season, all this amazing geometrical prints. But also, this was one of them too. Actually, that would cover my modesty. I got that on Vestiaire Collective. Maybe she did that actually a few years later because she brings back prints. So she had this print in these colorways and then she went to do this a few years later. So um, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna wear it now. Lucy, this is how I did it now. Oh, what? You genius. So I'm just gonna do makeup first and then I'm gonna take you through the look. So I think it's really simple. I just wanna have that color from the Prada print and it's really like Dahlia. I'm just gonna do darkness of Dahlia because it feels more modern. And then I'll put a tiny bit on my cheeks and I'll put a little bit on my eyes just to give that hint. And then I'm gonna come in with some Magician, which is cool because all these colors are quite cool, Lucy. Tiny, very light, smoky eye because the color's quite strong on my lips. And then of course it'd be good to rub in my blusher. Okay, so I've got the lip bringing out that beautiful, I call it nearly magenta, Bougainvillea, my favorite kind of shade. But there's a few key tricks here. One is, when you have something that you can just about do up, but it really pulls like this, you can see how much it's pulling, Molly. You can go it close up if you want. You need a belt to cover the pulling. So that's why I don't mind that this is a thick belt and not giving me much of a waist. It's more important that you don't feel it's too small for me. It's quite high-waisted. So that's why I ended up going for a skirt, because if I had a, I couldn't find a pair of trousers where the waist wasn't high enough for me to wear the belt. And a lot of vintage to me, it's, I will repeat this endlessly, it's about playing down the glamour of what that vintage piece used to be to make it feel more ageless and timeless. So just okay, a white trainer. Yeah. Okay, darling. Next outfit. So Lucy, do you remember this photograph? I do, I know exactly yeah. what this is. Lila's christening 16 years ago. I still fit the dress only because she was only a few months old and I was taking off the baby weight. It's a bit tight. And it was an era, you know, Lucy, that era was 2000s, early 2000s. And that sort of elegant shift dress was still yeah. in fashion. So this is Prada. At the time, I remember thinking I wanted to feel the romantic freshness of a mother with a baby, you know, so, so I never ever wear blush pink, but I yeah. decided to buy it for the sort of mood and the romance. Yeah, it was a mood. It was a mood, and I wore it with some shoes, which I got rid of, I don't have any more, but they were very pointed Prada ones with that tiny kitten heel, and they had perspirated fronts, and they were like a 1960s periwinkle at the front. It was very cool, a 60s shoe. So, what am I gonna do with it? This is the modern rendition of that dress. Oh, that's gorgeous, Trini. And I looked a long time to what I think I'd do with it, but I wanted to make it change from being a shift dress. And yeah. so putting a shirt underneath and then th very carefully, what kind of shirt with no buttons. So nothing would show through because the fabric is thin. And then I thought in order to broaden my shoulder, can I have some blues on sleeve? You know, it echoes the kind of lovely gathering that's in the bottom of the dress. It looks like it was made to go together. It so does, doesn't it? I'm like, and then I've done that more rock and roll shoe boot. But then the makeup, you know, I was eternally sort of ethereal, but I want to be a bit more rock chicky. So let's do some makeup. Right, so which Trini London stuff are you wearing? I'm wearing a bit of Desire, which is an eye to eye, just to give that sort of smoky eye under and over my lashes. But, you know, I'm not pretty Miss Perfect in this. I want to be a bit okay. more sexy. Then I've got wigs because i think it needs quite a lot of blusher because it washes me out and wigs named after my sister and i'm doing it with a really big brush and i hardly ever lucy do my makeup with a big brush but i want to have quite a wide expanse of blusher and then i got to put some on my nose and some on my forehead just so i'm i'm blushed everywhere <laughs> right. 
And then and lastly in my stack is some Dido because I just think that's pretty, but with brightness on my lip. And then I'll put a tiny bit like that. It's, you know, a little bit of a smoky eye, but still the femininity of the dress shows through. Of course. Let's do the whole thing. Okay. So many things, but not today. I'll bring it back around and around and around. That's what we love doing with clothes. But would you actually wear it? I would wear it. I'd wear it in the spring, and then I might just have like a little raincoat over my shoulders. Oh, there's another layer. There's always another layer, Lucy. Next outfit. What I wanted to do is try doing kimono, not with other silky fabrics. And this is where switching out the fabric takes it out of being too vintage. So everyone I think has one and it, yes, it could be your dressing gown. It could be something you wear as your seductress outfit. Replicating that fabric choice might be a, a thing you feel you should do, but it's like you should do the opposite. Oh, so I'll show you. another rule. Another rule. Final outfit and I think makeup wise, I'm literally gonna use on a lip glow because I just wanna have a bit of the color, but I wanna keep the makeup quite clean. I actually thought, let me just do a long jumper because the kimono is a very bad length on me. So that also vintageizes, vintageizes it. Do you see? Yes. I've done something that is very casual, a tracksuit bottom, albeit with a lovely stripe from Serena Butte, but it's still the elasticated waist. It's the little do up thing. A Zara jumper, kimono I got from Japan. That's actually one from the sort of 1910s. So it's really old. And then I found some vintage jewelry. I just kind of thought, let's make it glam, but keep the sweatpant. I love that really glam statement necklace with a casual, casual bottom half. And this is an old Lanvin and it's about 17 years old. I love that. You just said something, sweatpant, but make it glam. Yeah. We can all relate to that right now, you know. Definitely. So Definitely. Related. Oh, I love that. And I love that color that you called out the kimono as well. Yeah, because I didn't know whether to go lighter or darker, but I just thought it's winter. And in the summer, I could do, you know, a lavender jumper and, and, and paler trousers. It's very much, when you have a contrasting print, you can, do, you can go summer or winter with it. And on the back, that, I know there's some embroidery, isn't there? Yeah. So it pulls, yeah, it really pulls up the colours of that as well. God, you remember that so well, Lucy. You know my wardrobe nearly better than me now, because I'd forgotten there's the darker on the back. Yeah, that's really nice, <laughs> very nice. Okay, this is something I should be giving to Lila. But. My step-grandmother who smoked 80 cigarettes a day till she died on TV. This was nice. hers, so there's a, there's a real nostalgia. She's called on TV because she was my grandfather's third wife, I think. We didn't call her mother or grandmother. So um, it is too small, but I just want to show for anyone who has a lovely, you know, sort of slight brocade vintagey coat because there's so many of these in secondhand markets and vintage markets. How can you modernize it? Don't do me a disservice by saying, Trini, it's too tight. Don't keep it because I know Lila will want it one day and I want to show you guys how to do it. And I used to wear this just over a white dress, so it was very prim. I used to wear it to Ascot with a hat. Hello. Yeah, so let's see what else darling. I'm going to do now. <laughs> yes, darling. There you have it. So there's so many little things here I learned when I was putting this outfit together. One is I need to break the lining for it even to get on me. But the other thing is all about lengths. So when something is vintage, it's of an era where there was a very, very defined length of how things were worn. And in the late 50s and early 60s, it was sort of bracelet sleeve and just below the elbow. I need to cover that distance to make it more timeless. And I found this Victoria Beckham shirt and it's for Target. I remember it was the best deal of the century. The most important thing is I wanted to have something with a very deep cuff. So you didn't see the shirt in two bits below the bracelet sleeve. And the shirt needs to be white and crisp because that gives a contrast to the kind of very vintage feel of a brocade fabric. And then with trousers and not with a dress. And I've done a cropped trouser because to me, an ankle crop is a more timeless modern trouser. So these are the Zara ones from last summer. And a brogue, so the shoe is really modern and takes an echo of the gold of the outfit. And then in my ears, I have my mother's earrings that I just found when I was clearing out her things. And I never ever saw her wearing them apart from when she was like in her 20s. So I adore that. So I love this. And for those of you who are in Australia, 
and it's summer still, you know, this is a great way. You could have a, you know, very light shirt on underneath. I know it gets very hot in Australia, but it's that for, for the lighter climates. I think a lot of people would reach for the jeans. Yeah. And it's about, to me, it was about keeping that same color underneath. It makes yeah. it uh, a little bit more chic. You've made it so fresh. Thank you, darling. Gorgeous. So Lucy, you know this coat. <laughs> We've used it on Tales and Confessions before. We have, but can you tell us a bit more about it? So this is an old Prada coat and I bought this, I think like 2004. So it's about 16 years old. And it had a huge rosette here and it used to do up did you buy it for an occasion? I bought it for a part of my 40th birthday celebration. So it's 16 oh, years gosh. old, yeah. And this was the Venice trip. I do still wear it many different ways, but I'm gonna try it a very different way today because whenever I wear it, I still feel it's a bit vintage. And I've got another thing I'm gonna put on it, which I haven't tried yet, but I'm gonna try the whole thing and we're gonna see if it works. Okay, Lucy. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, little secret um, I didn't show you before, but this is my mum's old Hermes bag. I would always wear it in a ladylike way, and I just thought, let me just do the longer strap, and it is quite high, but a lot of fashion shows the last few years, they did these crossbody bags really high, and I quite liked it. So I decided for this it works. And the other key thing, Lucy, is neon because neon will make anything vintage feel timeless. I love that. I would never have thought to put neon with that. As soon as I put it with it, because I tried a few things first, suddenly it just felt timeless. The bag is a really beautiful present that my father gave my mum, and I hardly wear it. I wouldn't give this to Lila till she was 50, um, because I know she would trash it. And then I just put Katinka on, because I wanted my makeup, Lucy, to feel quite funky with a lip, not a classic red, or I could have done a classic red actually. Classic red could have been really nice, I didn't think of that. But then I put bunny over the top. So darling, there you have it. That was our vintage week. Oh, it's fantastic, thank you so much. It's a nice little trip down memory lane, but also love seeing how you've styled it. And I will definitely be applying the rules to any vintage pieces that I may acquire. That you may acquire. Well, I, you know, everyone has something in their wardrobe that is vintage from their family. And I think there's something wonderfully homaging about wearing things that belong to your parents or your grandparents or your great grandparents. If you got in a vintage store, you could always say it was my great grandma's, even if you bought it the previous week somewhere. But when you have clothes that have a history to them, that's what's wonderful. One or two things that I have, I see my mother, how she wore them in the 60s or 70s you know, and then I, how differently I would have worn them. And I think it's just how you can just make it fit into different eras. So I'm already wondering next week, Lucy, what you're going to choose from your mother's wardrobe. I actually have a piece in mind from my own wardrobe, which will be 21 years old. So Okay, fantastic. Okay, so I'll tell you what's on the cards for next week. We have got gray, 50 Shades of Grey. Come on, ladies, we count it corny as hell, but we love that title. We've also got Winter Sequins on the cards. Yes. And yes, I'll never say no to that. And then we've got that sense of, you know, dressing at home, smart, casual, but not just about your top half. And otherwise, vote for which one you want. And we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, Lucy. You too, Trini. Bye. Bye.